everybody, Jason Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about the great debate, tongue blocking or lip pursing. What do I do? <laughs> well, let's start. Here's some tongue blocking. tell you a little bit about my history with these armatures. First of all, I got a little booklet back in the day with my first Marine Band harmonica that showed me how to get a single note on a harmonica, which was by tongue blocking. And it said for me to put my mouth over holes one, two, and three, right here over all of those, and then to put my tongue over holes one and two. And that's how you get one note. I threw away that booklet and I never looked at it again. And my harmonica teacher, I don't remember if he told me about this, but he was just like, try to get a single note. So I just went. And that's what we call lip pursing, when you just narrow it down and just get one single note. Tongue blocking is when you achieve a single note by putting your mouth over one or more holes and blocking it. I can even tongue block the one draw by putting my mouth over the end of the harmonica and just playing the one. But if I put my mouth over holes one and two and then just block off one, I get this sound. If I blow, inhale. So what this does is it adds a percussive sound and I get a pretty good tone out of the harmonica because I have a lot of the harmonica in my mouth. It's making my jaw lower, I'm breathing more naturally, and my uh, embouchure is bigger and wider. So somebody that's just starting out, if they start out tongue blocking, they might have better tone than somebody that's playing for years lip pursing. What is lip pursing? Now I've heard these people talk about lip blocking and things like that, all right? I don't even know what that is, all right? <laughs> There's two armatures. One includes your tongue on the harmonica. The other one doesn't. There is a U-blocking embouchure. I think P.T. Gazelle uses that. Uh, who Norton Buffalo used to use that, where you curl your tongue around the, the hole on the left side and the hole on the right side, and you play the one in the middle. I'm not even going into that here today. You'll have to find somebody else to do your U-blocking video. So, lip pursing. What is it? It's when you just put your mouth over enough of the harmonica 
that you can still get one single hole. Okay, so that's lip pursing. And you can do that, of course, on all the blows. Why would you choose one over the other? Hopefully in this video, I'm going to prove that you don't need to choose. You need to learn how to do both. Both embouchures have good things about them and bad things about them. And both embouchures have one thing each that the other one can't do. So let's start there. About this tongue blocking business. You can get two notes to play at the same time. We call this a split. Now, oftentimes these splits are octaves, and that makes a very cool sound on the harmonica. For example, I'll put my mouth over holes one, two, three, and four, over all four, and I'm gonna blow. Getting a full chord. So now I'm going to try to put my tongue over just holes two and three and get one and four on the outside. Now I'll inhale. That's called tongue block octaves, or a better name for it is a two whole split. So I can take a melody, say Saints Go Marching In in first position, and I can tongue block the whole melody to get a more percussive sound by taking my tongue and slapping it on and off. Additionally, I get two notes. I get an octave in most cases that sounds a lot like an accordion or a regular organ or just two harmonicas playing the same thing at the same time. started playing, I didn't know anything about this two-hole split, three-hole split, single-hole splits. Those are all versions of this technique that you can learn to do, but I could hear them. I just couldn't understand why I didn't sound that way. So like I would listen to Paul Butterfield, who was primarily a lip purser. <laughs> And I could do that, I learned that, but then he would go up top and he would go, all of a sudden he'd go. And I didn't know what that was. I had no idea until somebody told me he's tongue blocking. I learned that I needed to put my mouth over holes three, four, five, and six, and then block four and five. So I was just playing three blow and six blow. And then I could take my tongue on and off and get that percussive slapping sound that I heard so many of the Chicago blues guys doing and other harmonica players too. And that if I left my tongue in that position and I moved around anywhere there were four holes on the harmonica, I could make this lick sound like this. Tongue blocking. Lip person. Now, later I learned that a lot of people 
were playing just one note at a time, but tongue blocking it. But I couldn't figure out why they were doing this. That's all tongue blocking, as opposed to. Well, I realized it pretty quickly it was about that slap. So even if I wasn't playing an octave, I could still slap it with a single note. Right? So that was very cool, and I was like, okay, I'm all about tongue blocking octaves or single notes in the top octave, but I don't need to do that in the bottom. And that's what I thought for years. So let's talk about that. Now down bottom, I was imitating the sounds of tongue blockers, like I heard Little Walter, like on Juke. <laughs> And I was doing that lip pursing by opening my mouth and then narrowing it down to one hole. Right, so I could get a good tongue blocking sound without tongue blocking. And I was pretty sure that's what little Walter was doing. I didn't know that he was tongue blocking single notes. So he's putting his mouth over holes one and two, inhaling on both, and then slapping one with his tongue by closing off one. Right? So that was very cool. And I figured out later that that was awesome. But I didn't know that you could also bend the notes. So I thought, little Walter, he might be doing that on the bottom. But what happens when he goes... I didn't know that those guys were tongue blocking and bending. How do they do it? Well... It's not unlike regular bending, except instead of using your tongue to pull back the note, you kind of use your throat a little bit more. So instead of going tongue, lip pursing, I'm going and I can mix it with that little slapping sound. was a big part of that traditional Chicago sound as far as how Little Walter and some of them other guys, Big Walter Horton, were playing. But not every one of those guys was a tongue blocker. Billy Branch, Carrie Bell, Junior Wells, some pretty heavy names right there. Not all of those guys were tongue blocking. When is it good to lip purse and when is it good to tongue block? The answer is largely up to you, okay? Both embouchures have something that's good about them and something that kind of detracts from them. Let's talk about that. First, let's discuss where the tongue block people are right. Now, by tongue block people, I mean people that believe that the only way to play the harmonica is almost always to exclusively tongue block. That means when you're bending a note, when you're playing a note single, when you're playing an octave, whatever, that your tongue should always be on the harmonica. Why would they say that? The reason why so many people find tongue blocking to be a superior embouchure, and they'll tell you this, is because of tone. The idea is is that tongue blocking gives you a deeper, bigger, fatter tone than lip pursing. Why would they say that? Well, one of the main reasons from like a scientific standpoint is that 
If you've been playing harmonica for a while, you'll notice whether you're a lip purser or a tongue blocker, that the more of the harmonica that you can get into your mouth, the bigger your tone is. So if I'm puckering and I'm not doing it well, and I'm kind of leaning off of the harmonica like this, I'm gonna have a thin, smaller, weaker, more brittle kind of sound. If I'm tongue blocking, by default, I have to stick this thing far into my mouth while I'm blocking, putting more of my mouth on the harmonica and forcing my jaw into a lower position, which is important. By tongue blocking, it forces the harmonica deep into my mouth and it's still pretty easy to get one note. That's one reason to tongue block, is it just, I mean, a beginner harmonica student can sometimes have better tone. I mean, a first week harmonica student that learns to tongue block can have better tone than a lip purser that's been playing for 20 or 30 years. But for my money, the real reason to tongue block is to get that slap. Now you can imitate the sound of a slap like I was talking about earlier, lip pursing by opening up your mouth and then closing it in. I'm putting my mouth over holes one, two, and three and then narrowing down by lip pursing to two draw. And I'm also being careful to keep good tone by lowering my jaw and putting a lot of the harmonica in my mouth, even though I'm still lip pursing. That's lip pursing. Here's tongue blocking. Lip pursing tongue blocking almost identical so I didn't think for a long time when I was growing up that there was any purpose in learning how to tongue block but then I would hear guys in the like holes three draw four draw five draw six blow playing single notes and getting that slapping sound and no matter how hard I tried to imitate that lip pursing take that sunny boy lick I would try to slop it up to sound like Sonny Boy and I couldn't until I realized that you had to tongue block it. Certain stuff you just cannot get that chordal rhythmic sound lip pursing no matter how hard you try now in my opinion good tone isn't one of the things that you can't get by lip pursing that in other words good tone isn't exclusive to tongue blocking what is true is that tongue blocking the embouchure of tongue blocking lends itself to good tone meaning that in order to tongue block you have to lower your jaw. It forces you to breathe more naturally and your chances of sounding better on the harmonica with a good tone are greater if you're tongue blocking. Whereas if you're lip pursing, the temptation is to Right, but if you're cautious and you lip purse and you make sure to open your jaw, that was lip pursing, tongue blocking. Lip pursing, tongue blocking. Lip pursing, tongue blocking, 
almost identical, but you have to lower your jaw and you have to breathe naturally if you're lip pursing or you won't get it. Now, you'll never get the sound of octaves or splits lip pursing. You can't play six blow and three draw out of two sides of your mouth. You need your tongue. <laughs> You ever see Rick Estrin play no-handed? He's doing it like Sonny Boy used to do it. There's videos of Sonny Boy playing no-handed, tongue blocking, and he's playing some mean stuff without any hands, bends and licks and everything. So why is lip pursing good? What are its advantages and what are its disadvantages? Now, I believe that tongue blocking has one main disadvantage. And that's one thing that it cannot do. And that thing is that you cannot play intricate bends on the low end of the harmonica. Like, for example, not at that speed. You just can't get it at that speed. Now, like a lot of the hardcore tongue block people, first of all, they'll tell you that you can tongue block anything that you can lip pursing. However, if I ask them to do any of that stuff, they just look at me and go, why would you want to? Why would you need to? And my answer to them would be, maybe the song calls for it. <laughs> maybe it's in the melody of the song. Maybe it's a lick you would like to play. Maybe the guitar player or the saxophone player or any other instrument did that. The answer is because you want to. All right, you cannot tongue block bend that intricately at that speed. You can lip pursing. Now, I told you the lip pursing has stuff it can't do. You cannot imitate that slapping sound all over the harmonica. You might be able to slightly imitate it down bottom by opening and closing your mouth like a tongue blocker here. Lip pursing. Tongue blocking. Lip pursing. You might be able to imitate it down bottom, but when you get up to the top, you won't be able to do that. There's no way. I'm lip pursing. It doesn't sound anything like this. Might sound a little bit like it, but it doesn't sound as good, right? So that is the advantage of tongue blocking, is that slapping thing. And it lends itself to good tone. Whereas the advantage of lip pursing is you can get fast, intricate lines, especially in the bottom end of the harp. And it's not just about the speed, it's about the articulation. By lip pursing, your tongue is free to add a staccato-like accent on the beginning of every note. So at certain speeds, this gives you a clear and precise articulation that makes every note audible even at lightning speeds. So I'm putting a tuss sound on the top of each note. And 
and I can do it anywhere on the harmonica, but I especially need it on the bend sounds. Tongue blockers, there's your challenge. Is anybody out there that is, thinks I'm wrong and can get those intricate bends all tongue blocking, I absolutely applaud you and I would like to see it, but I haven't seen it yet. Here's your lick. and then speed it up for me, please. crazy that stuff sounded cool so there's lip pursing and there's tongue blocking both of them are wonderful embouchures all tongue blocking so that's tongues coming on and off That whole last part was all was all still lip pursing. I'm just being very careful to lower my jaw, open my mouth, and get as much of the harp in there as I can. That's lip person, here's tongue blocking. Lip person. Piercing. Tongue blocking. I'll do one and one. Right, so I you can really imitate the tongue blocking pretty good down on the bottom just by opening and closing your mouth but you'll never be able to imitate it, in, especially with the octaves. You'll never be able to imitate that lip pursing. Now you can, they, even the single note slaps. I try to play that lip pursing. I can get good tone and everything by opening my mouth, but I'm missing that percussive slap. The other thing is I find that tongue blocking has a really cool way of affecting your time, where you kind of start playing kind of like you know, behind the beat a little better. 
So look, we'll do more on this subject, okay? I will come back, I'll do a video just on getting tongue block octaves and just on getting triple hole tongue blocks octaves and then just on getting single notes and bending while tongue blocking. But this video here is to show you that both embouchures are legitimate. They both have their place. The advantages of tongue blocking are chordal slaps and the fact that it lends itself to good tone. You cannot get those chordal slaps all over the harmonica lip pursing. You just can't do it. But you can get good tone lip pursing if you remember to lower your jaw. Tongue blocking lends itself to good tone and is necessary for getting slapping percussive Chicago and other kinds of music sounds, chordal slaps. Another problem that I see a lot of tongue blockers doing is once they learn how to get the slap and they get the slap good and it sounds great in Chicago blues. <laughs> they forget how to turn that off. And they'll play melodies where they allow chords that don't necessarily belong, like say on a minor tune. Right there, you're getting an A major chord. And say you were playing a song like Summertime. That's okay right there, you get that B minor chord. But when you blow, you're getting a little bit of an A major chord and you don't want that in there. Not only that, that whole percussive slapping thing, it's great for Chicago blues, but it can become like a bull in a china shop if you make it habit. If you always are slapping clump, 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 clump. When was the last time you heard a singer saying, summer time and the living is easy. That's an extreme example, but you still, you hear a lot of great blues players playing nice ballads. With too much of that slapping sound. Now, of course, you can play a beautiful ballad tongue blocking without doing that. It's just, you gotta remember that the embouchure lends itself to that slap. So you gotta force yourself to not do that. Just the same way when you're lip pursing, you have to force yourself to lower your jaw. Lip pursing lends itself to bad tone. Tongue blocking occasionally lends itself to chunky playing where it doesn't necessarily belong. And that about wraps it up. There, there's a lot more I could talk about, and I will in other videos. We'll go over specific lip pursing techniques like that staccato thing that I talked about and triple tonguing and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff's been covered here on YouTube, but you guys are asking me in specific how I think about it, and I'll definitely do that for you. We'll also talk about single hole tongue blocking, how challenging it can be to learn that, making the adjustments. I have some past videos on that subject matter too, but this is gonna be way more complete, way more thorough. So in the end, you know, what we find is that there's not one embouchure that's superior than another, that both embouchures, tongue blocking and lip pursing have their own purpose and do their own things really well and some things not so well. Tongue blocking can do some things only, lip pursing can do like one thing only. They're both great embouchures, you need to learn them. The thing is, is that, you know, today, as YouTube from Joe Felisco to Howard Levy, we're seeing that the new generation doesn't even care about this stuff. They just want to learn them. They're not trying to pick a side, not trying to be one or the other. They're just trying to make the best music they can. I know probably a few of you guys are going to ask me about overblowing and can you tongue block overblowing. You can tongue block overblowing and you can tongue block blow bending you're just going to run into the, some of the same problems with speed and maybe a little bit of intonation but overall tongue blocking can overblow and can bend anywhere it's really just when you get into the speed and articulation thank you guys for watching so much i really appreciate it
I especially appreciate all of you that have taken the time and the money to check out my Patreon channel. On my Patreon channel, for as low as a dollar a month, you can unlock all kinds of video blogs and some private lessons that I've been getting to, too. I've been telling blue stories on there, stuff that I don't want to put on YouTube. I don't want to read all the nasty comments. <laughs> I feel safer putting it on Patreon. That's your own private access to the twisted mind that is Jason Ritchie. I really appreciate you guys. It's making a huge difference. It's making it possible for me to take the time to edit these videos and put out quality content every single Friday of free lesson. I got a lone wolf pedal going up as soon as I can get it. We're gonna be demonstrating the low, low, high lone wolf pedal. Check it out, it's coming up. Every single Friday we got a free lesson here. Speaking of lone wolf, thanks to lone wolf. Lone Wolf Blues Company making the best in pedals. They make my microphone, the Jason Ritchie signature microphone. Buy it, it's the best harmonica microphone out there for like a wide variety of purposes. You can't beat it. It holds easy. It's got this little flare on the end. You got a volume control right there. This one says, who dat? That's what that one says. It says, who dat? You dat. If you buy the microphone, that's what's up. Harp gear amplifiers. The best, best harmonic amplifiers out there. I've had the same one 16 years. It's a big 410. They call it the uh, HG50. Also, Blue Moon Harmonicas making the best in custom combs. Custom covers, look at that one. Snakeskin one. Honer Harmonicas. I put all these little fancy Blue Moon parts, put them on Honer Harmonicas. Put them on Honer Reeds. I usually use a Marine Band. Sometimes I swap it out with some Special 20 covers, get a little bit of a darker tone. But yeah, I got a website, www.mooncat.org. There should be some tour dates this year. Come check me out. We'll see if they happen or not. But, you know, they're booked. I'm going to. I'm going to show up. Just finished an album with Joe Crown. It'll be all over my website. We're doing some organ trio jazz and funk and a little bit of blues. All on that record. It's coming up. You can hear a whole lot more about it on my Patreon channel. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you all. Subscribe. Subscribe to this YouTube channel today. Hundreds. Hundreds of free harmonica lessons, hundreds of them, going back before I could grow facial hair. Check it out. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for all your love and support. I appreciate you.